John Gardy is a Canadian thinker and tinkerer and jack of all trades. Uh, I think he's designed a few warehouses, but he became very much in the public spotlight after tweeting to Elon Musk his idea of how Hyperloop could work, his, his new high-speed travel system, uh, which we know very little about right now. And Elon Musk said that's the closest guest so far. John wrote this article for Vice on how he thinks it could come together, Hyperloop, how it could all come together and be just incredibly cheap, like way cheaper than the, um, the California Rail project. Less, less than a tenth of that project's budget. Yes, which is remarkable. Um, I read this article. I took notes and, and um, highlighted stuff. Okay, so stuff. tell me, tell us all, Tim, won't you, um, how this works. Well, first of all, Elon Musk hasn't announced anything yet. The announcement is August 12th. Yeah, so we're waiting for that. may or may not have been last week, depending on how quickly this gets edited. I'll edit it, okay? <laughs> I'll edit like I do fucking everything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is John <laughs> Gardy's take on what that idea could be logistically. Yes. The, I mean, the idea for the Hyperloop is the idea for the Hyperloop, that's one thing. John but, Gardy talks about how it could be built. Yes. Uh, both efficiently and inexpensively, mm -hmm. which is a cool idea. His, his, um, his first big idea is that it should be elevated. It should be up on these big giant um, pylons. More pylons are needed? More pylons are definitely needed for okay. this project. <laughs> um, yeah, because what that does is that gives the, them more right of way and they're kind of out of the way of like, existing railways and freeways and roadways and buildings and stuff and they could be able to space things out in such a way that it wouldn't interfere too much and could go rather smoothly. When a new train line is built it interferes with everything. It fucks up days for roads and highways and all kinds of stuff. Um, so getting it up off the ground is good. It's yeah. a good idea. Uh, how does the drainage work though? Because dr that's an important part with, with trains. It's not necessary for that stuff up there. As long as everything around the, the support of the pylon is fine, which sh should be. Uh -huh. He also says the farther apart that you build the pylons, it, the better, the lower impact on the surrounding ground, which is another good idea. That's he good also idea. talks about a, like a truss that goes he along. He was very He's much into all trusses. about trusses. Trusses, which and are, I, this, oh, we'll put a picture of this. It's like the, the support with the, the little beams inside of it that go like diagonal, like a bridge. What Kim is doing with her hands is absolutely right. You don't need any explanation <laughs> further than that. Other than like a train is built, it's mm -hmm. called bootstrapping basically, it gets built as you go and is useful behind. You use the existing train tracks to build more train tracks. So they put like a special, a specially built crane yes. that would travel along the Along this the truss tomb, that truss. could build more truss in front of it uh -huh. once the pylons are in place. Uh -huh. And then at the same time, build the Hyperloop tube. Which is made out of composite sewer pipe. Right, which is a cool idea. Yeah, because it already exists and it's affordable. Light and cheap. Would that, would that be enough though for the amount of, I assume, air pressure and magnetic parts of the, see, we don't even know how it works. We have no so idea. So this is all conjecture. That's the nice part of this, is that he doesn't have to have anything specific because it hasn't we even been announced yet. yet. This is all just speculation. The, um, the other cool things that I saw about this, I didn't realize how much of an impact building a train had, or train tracks rather, when you lay down train tracks. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the ground has to be like leveled and packed and you have to bring in all this gravel for drainage mm -hmm. and build up this mat, like miles and miles and miles and miles of this. And then every time you encounter a mountain, you need to blast a tunnel, then you need to do stuff with all that stuff and like bridges over water and valleys and like it's, crazy how intensive building a train is and how much easier this is. Yeah, well because of the elevation yeah. and the, the relative cheapness of the materials. Um, so I think he said the pylons would be between 70 and 100 feet of off the ground. Oh, 30 and 100, but 70 is the, the 70 spot, is yeah. optimum? Yeah. Okay, so would they have to build like specialized shapes to make it the, the tubing go certain ways and? Basically, I think how it's gonna work is the, the pylons um, would be layered so mm -hmm. that you could just bring in as many as you need to get to that uniform height. So if the ground goes down, you have a taller pylon. Mm -hmm. And as it gets shorter, you have a shorter pylon. Okay. Everything is you know, manufactured and, and brought in modularly, mm -hmm. in, including the Hyperloop and the trusses itself. Is it sturdy enough? Is what sturdy enough? This, this construct with the, the pylons and the trusses. In theory, I mean, he's an engineer or okay. tinkerer. Well, he had built a, a warehouse, but that's different than a high speed travel. Listen, system. this was a long article and it had lots <laughs> of bullet points, all right? So I assume the guy knows what he's talking about. All right. 
Maybe this is all moot. Maybe this is exactly what will happen. We'll find out when Elon Musk makes his big announcement. Or maybe we won't. Maybe he'll just give us a bunch of bullshit.